I was in the shower. Um, and then I got out of the shower, and then I had a towel on, and I totally remember it exactly, because I got out, and my roommate at the time said, holy something, holy keef, something like that, come, come out here, you gotta check this out. Uh, we're, the Trade Center Tower is on fire, this is nuts, something like that. And I came walking out and I had my towel on and everything and um, I walked out and looked, looked at the TV and there was the tower with you know, a smoking hole in the side of it. And couldn't have been maybe 15 seconds later, we saw from the view this plane coming in and then it's turning, it's going toward it and it just, the second plane hit. It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian. Some Dumbledore. breaking news to report. You're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center where we have just received word that a plane apparently has crashed into the tower. At first you thought, is this just like, oh, this is some terrible accident. You know, how does a plane fly into a giant skyscraper like that? But then when you saw another one veer in and hit it, everybody kind of knew this is not an accident. Again, I think the, the biggest thing is that sense of freedom, that sense of um, invulnerability that you could go where you wanted to and you didn't have to worry about stuff. Like that was the initial impact. And then it was like, well, what happened after that? Now you have um, a country that's on edge. There's people that want to um, figure out who did this, Every, everything from understand their motivations as to why they would do it than to just seek revenge and, you know, get back at the people that did it. My name is Dr. Lopa Basu, and I teach in the English Philosophy and Communication Studies Department at UW Stout. On 9-11, I was in my apartment in the Bronx, which is the northern borough in New York City. When it's, it all started unfolding, um, I had not even woken up because those were my graduate school days of staying up late and, and working on my dissertation. And I got a call from my husband and he asked me to turn on the TV and then I saw, you know, everything play out. Uh, but because I lived in New York City, the immediate ramifications were very visible. I was able to see a completely changed New York City. I mean, the air felt different, very heavy, with uh, smoke and debris. And um, my school was on 34th Street, which is you know closer to uh, Ground Zero. And you know, immediately, like all of the uh, subway stations had changed with photographs of missing people, shrines, and flowers. So I do remember those scenes very vividly. Soon after 9-11 happened, uh, my husband and I moved to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in 2002, and we lived there for, two, for about three years. And in 2005, after I was hired at UW Stout, we moved to the Chippewa Valley. I don't know that student cultures immediately changed after 9-11. I, I think it was the cultural things that happened afterward particularly the next five years afterward are what changed the way people interacted and, and talked and spoke with each other. And, and it, again, it, I think the biggest collective thing was it was immediately a, a fear, you know. Um, I sort of wanted to distance myself from that fear and that sense of unease. And it felt like, you know, in a, in a small town, I was relatively safe, though not really. I, uh, but somehow something changed maybe around 2013 or 14, I mean, on subsequent visits to New York, and uh, I wanted to engage more and explore more what had happened and what I hadn't uh, been able to process then. So as I started teaching and doing the research, I found out more about how Menominee had been impacted. There was fear and uncertainty among students. There was the fear of um, uh, among students that there would be a, an immediate war and m many of them might, have been, might be called to serve. Other kinds of impact which I found out were like, uh, maybe inspired by 9-11, there were lots of uh, mischief makers in, in the dorms and they, you know, uh, there were cases of arson in um, AF and other um, dorms where, you know, suddenly maybe there would be 
there was a threat of a bomb and people had to be evacuated. I was so focused on New York and, you know, Al-Qaeda and, and all that, that I didn't realize that there would be these ripple effects in, in a local community in the Midwest. I think there's no way that you're not. There's, there's no way that people aren't impacted by the events of 9-11 because it, even though it's 20 some years later, everything that came from that influenced your way of life. You don't think about how people just kind of were used to doing things the way that they, they were done. You, you know, like, like I mentioned on an airplane, um, you just get on an airplane, you go on an airplane, it doesn't matter, you don't think about those kind of things. You know, in spite of the fact that New York had been so uh, hard hit by an act of terror, there were many voices in the city that were urging, you know, against retaliation. You know, I think, I think the, the collective horror of what happened is just something that everybody talked about. And, um, you know, whether or not you knew somebody there, um, you collectively discussed it. You, you kind of have to look at your position in the world relevant to all those that came before you and try to learn about you know, what their circumstances were and what the scenarios were in the world at the time. Just because we are distanced 20 or 50 or 75 years doesn't mean that history ends. And we always have a choice, if we know history, to do things differently. I think as a literary scholar, I, I like to share all the stories that are being written and told. So even from a place of such um, devastation and horror, you can create something which is beautiful. And, and it is this act of imaginative kind of solidarity, empathy with characters that they don't know, uh, that gives me hope because you know that makes, uh, makes them thoughtful citizens of the world who, who will resist and not just accept uh, you know, just uh, mainstream opinion.